It's good to be back again here. Uh, I was here two Sundays ago. <laughs> the last Sunday, because we had destined for honor last weekend, I had to rest on Sunday morning and afternoon because two days of straight teaching, uh, you know, for eight hours. <laughs> of course, there were breaks. It was something that I really need to recover from. And so we thank God because God has again touched many lives during our last Destined for Honor. Are there any one of you who were there in our last Destined for Honor retreat? Anyone here present? Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm sure your perspective of life has changed. Amen. And uh, we, I received one uh, text message from one a DFH attender. Uh, he was saying that he was so touched and moved and he was asking, she, she, she was asking if this... This can be done in Baguio City. So I told Faye, I think that's possible. And uh, we would like to train more teachers of DFH so that I don't carry the burden alone. Okay? So here in BCI, we are developing, gradually developing a pool of uh, DFH uh, teachers. And hopefully, they will have the confidence to do it without me. Okay, since all the materials are there and they have gone through DFH many times already. Okay, so how many of you done in your life after you attended the Stair for Honor? How many can still remember? Okay, there are so many things that has changed in your perspective of things, in how you relate to people, in how you see God. And you pray that more and more of you would have the opportunity to join the Destined for Honor retreat because God has been using this tool to transform so many lives, not only here in Davao, but also in other countries now, in New Zealand, in Australia. And now we are getting into the Caribbean islands by next year. And there's a great hunger there to bring that message to the Caribbean people. And so we thank God for those opportunities. We thank God for how God has also moved in so many lives after they've experienced DFH and they have been experienced real improvement in their relationships with their, in their family, in their marriages, and also in their personal uh, relationships with other people. Today we will continue the series I started October 21. That was the first time after I arrived from uh, back to the Philippines. And we're going to go back and finish what I've started. And the title of that message is there, Surrender Your Small Ambitions, Living for God's Higher Purpose for Your Life. Okay? You know, life can be very boring and routinary when you don't understand what God's purpose is for you. Okay? And many times we are bound to commit the same mistakes over and over again because we are not learning what God is trying to teach us. Okay? So when you see that there's a pattern of repeated, you know, uh, mistakes or failures in your life, that means we are not listening. That's the way we keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. And when God allows us to grow through a pattern of similar circumstances, parang sinabi, Lord, akala ko graduate na ako dyan. Bakit? Ito na naman. <laughs> How many of you have experienced that? Okay, parang akala ko tapos na. Ito na naman. Ganun na naman. Laking problema na naman. And then, the problem is very similar. Okay? Remember in our past preachings, I've been telling you the ways of God. When God tends to repeat those trials in your life, same trials, it only means you haven't graduated yet. That you haven't learned the most important lessons that God is teaching you, and you have not yet changed. Remember, the purpose of trials, according to the Word of God, is to change you. That's why when you say, God, baguhin mga tong aking sitwasyon, no, that's not the right prayer. Lord, baguhin mo ngayon taong yun para din ako nahirapan. Mali pong panalangin yun. Kasi hindi yan sasagutin ng Diyos. In fact, lalong lalala yung tao at lalong lalala yung sitwasyon mo. I'm sure you have experienced that already. Because we are asking the wrong request. Ang dapat tanungin natin, Lord, Lord, pwede bang baguhin mo attitude ko para hindi na ako naapektuhan itong taong ito? Pag yun ang panalangin mo, siguradong sasagutin ng Lord. Kasi yun ang purpose niya is to change you, not your circumstances. Kasi, kaya nga niya pinadala yan dyan, kasi gusto ko niyang baguhin, tapos gusto mo alisin yun. Eh, hindi ka pa nagbabago. O sige, ang Diyos, sa awa niya, aalisin niya, pero ibabalik niya uli. At ibabalik niya uli. At ibabalik niya uli, hanggang sa magbago ka. Amen? Ipagkasabi sa inyong katabi, kaya magbago na tayo. 
para hindi pa ulit-ulit ang examination. Lagi na lang may retake exam. <laughs> okay? I'm talking to you truth from the Word of God and before I've expounded this repeatedly and showing you this is what God is about when He allows us to go through trials and frustrations and disappointments. Amen? So, today we're going to continue and we'll start by reading the, the scripture that we started to expound on in Luke chapter 5, which is the call of Simon Peter along the Sea of Galilee. So, babasahin po natin ulit itong story ito at dito tayo mag-springboard towards the next part of the message. Okay? So, can we read this together? One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, okay? And asked him to put out a little from shore. Can we read together? Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Okay? Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to... Okay, remember that. The nets were breaking. Okay? So what's the next? Okay. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. The nets were breaking. Boats were sinking. That is so incredible. Okay? When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet, knees rather, and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Na konsyensya din siya. For he and his companions were, okay, the word in the Greek language actually can be literally translated, terrified. Okay? For he and his companions were literally terrified at the catch of fish they had taken, so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Wow. Bagong fishing business for him. Pero hindi siya business, ministry na. Amen? So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Okay? The three most defining moments in the life of Peter's life were his moments of failure. Okay? How many have experienced ng kabiguan recently? You failed on the test, an exam, you failed in your marriage, you failed in, you know, in your plans and goals. Okay? The most defining moments in the life of Simon Peter, you will see, were his moments of failure. Here in Luke chapter 5, first took place at the Sea of Galilee, here in Luke chapter 5, he failed as a fisherman. Okay? And this is where God, Jesus called him. The second, at the passion of Christ when he denied his master three times. That was his second major failure when he was tested by Christ. And finally, at the Sea of Galilee again, after the resurrection of Christ, recording for us in John chapter 21, when instead of, you know, doing what the Lord wants to do, he went back to his fishing business. He went, he went fishing again. And so Jesus appeared at the shore and called them them, and later on they realized it was Jesus. And by the time they got to shore, there was already fish already being cooked by Jesus. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, they were hungry that morning, and Simon was hungry, and he wanted to eat, so he went to fishing. And then later on, Jesus showed, I can provide you the food you need. So when they arrived there, hindi lang may isda. Eh, ano na, na ano tawag doon? Grilled fish pa. Okay? Sa, pero sa, para lang mapagbigyan sila, sige, dalhin nyo ilang isda na nahuli nyo. Idagdag ko dito. Ibig sabihin, I can provide. And remember, I gave you a mirac another miraculous catch, catch today. Which means, Simon, you better know what your priority is. Your priority is not going back to that fishing industry. I called you away from that already. Because I can provide you all the fish you'll ever need if you just follow me. Understand it? 
So it was an agony sense of failure. Kaya when, when he recognized it was Jesus, according to John 21, he clothed himself and dove into the sea and went there ahead of the other apostles because obviously he's going to apologize for going back to the fishing business. And so, but that occasion of his failure, again, became the occasion of his commissioning. Okay? See, your experiences of failure are the most important moments of your life, not the moments of success. Because your moments of success, once you don't know how to handle success, can blind in you to the reality that God is behind your success. You might take the glory for yourself and become proud and forget to give honor and glory to God. Your moments of success also don't reveal to you your strengths, right? Tama? But your moments, moments of failure reveal to you your weaknesses. And that is important to God because that is where God wants to change you. Okay? So, let me share with you some thoughts about wisdom learned from failure. Can we read this together? It is not failure that hurts us more than our wrong attitude towards it. Diba pag merong nabigo, napapakamatay? Nagwawala, gumagawa ng mga life-changing decisions because of that emotion of pain and bitterness because of that moment of failure. Sometimes our emotions can becloud our judgments and lead us to make the worst decisions of our life because nagpadala tayo sa damdamin ng galit, frustration, disappointment, and bitterness. Okay? And, siyempre, pag negative tingin mo sa failure mo, because you allow your failure to define you. Okay? Can we say to the person beside you, your failures don't define who you are. They only define where you can improve. You understand that? Can we say that together? My failures do not define who I am. They only define where I need to improve. In other words, nobody is a failure. We all commit failures. But failures are learning points in life. They are not there to degrade our person. But we allow some this failure to degrade ourselves by allowing the failure to define us rather than define what we need to change in our lives so that we can become a better person and become more successful the next time. Amen. Okay? So, sometimes it is our attitude towards failure that hurts us more. Okay? But what tamang attitude mo sa failure, eh, I'm learning something now. Hindi ka masyadong nahihirapan or nagsasaktan kasi may nakita mo yung benefit ng failure mo. May natutuhan ka eh. That will help you become a better person. Okay? Sometimes no amount of counseling can change you until you experience failure. And you're willing to learn from that failure instead of allowing the failure to define who you are. Okay? So failure is one of life's best mentors for success. It acts as a mirror to show us where we need to improve. Failure educates us to become better if we choose to learn from it. Amen? When your attitude towards failure is negative, when your attitude towards failure is that, oh, this failure defines, I'm a failure. Ay, patay, mali. That's gonna bring you down. It's gonna hurt you more. But when you see failure as a mentor, a learning point, masakit. Pero dahil naintindihan mo, may beneficyo, may natutuhan ako. Kaya next time, mag-iingat na ako. Tama? So, hindi ganun kalalim yung pain kasi tama yung attitude mo. Okay? So, if you see that failure is one of life's best mentors for success, kasi alam mo, minsan na taong di matuto hanggang hindi makagawa ng kamalian eh. Di ba sometimes, sabi mo, anak, huwag mong gawin yan. Hindi tama yan. Makulit eh. Talagang gagawin. Ayun, napaso. Do you think maghihipo pa yan ng mainit na kalan? After that? Hindi na. Okay? Nakaranas na siya ng pain eh. Kaya ngayon, tama pala si mami, dapat di ko pala <laughs> No amount of teaching from the pulpit sometimes can change you if you do not have the heart of humility and submission. And you may have to learn it the hard way, the painful way. You understand that? And that is what failure does. It acts as a mirror 
to show us where we need to improve. Failure educates us to become better if we choose to learn from it rather than allow it to define us and pull us down. That's our choice. Amen? So that's why when people come to me and they're bemoaning and bemoaning how they failed, they failed, I ask them, so what have you learned? Do na mag Okay, so another thing you need to learn about failure. Can we read this together? Every failure is meant to humble and to challenge us, to make, take a deeper look at ourselves, to enable us to see the blemishes we would otherwise not see, and our need to deal with them in the journey of become a better person. How many of you have learned a lot from your failures and that helped you become a better person? Okay, see? The most successful people in the world are not people who never failed. In fact, they failed more than anyone. And they became very successful because they learned so many things from their failures. You understand this? So failures enables us to see the blemishes we would otherwise not see and our need to deal with them in the journey of becoming a better person. Okay? God wants you to become more and more like Christ. Okay? Can we read this together? Every failure also gives us an opportunity to experience more of God's redeeming and empowering grace. When we become to Him in our brokenness and allow Him to heal us and change us, we would never know the awesomeness of God's grace if He never failed. Every moment of failure leads you to encounter with the awesome grace of God. Because that failure is not the end. That failure is just a basis by which God wants you to know Him more. And the greatness of His grace towards you. Because God is not finished with you yet. So don't finish yourself. You understand this, okay? So, it, we, we, need to, we have to come to Him and be honest about our failure instead of trying to deny it or trying to find justification for it. We need to be broken because that's the purpose of failure is to break us. We need to be broken enough to come to God and ask Him to heal our lives and to change us based on the lessons we have learned from that failure. So we emerge. A person is becoming more and more like Christ. Amen? We can never know the awesomeness of God's grace if we never fail. Okay? There are many theological questions when it comes to the fall of man. Pastor, why did God allow man to be, allow man to be tested if he knew man is going to fail the test in the Garden of Eden? How many of you asked that question? Bakit pa ito? Susubukan. Alam naman niya, babagsak. Di ba? Risky masyado yun. Pinapasok niya yung serpent sa garden. <laughs> Diyos pa na nag-consent. Pumasok yung serpent sa garden para tuksuin sila. Plano ng Diyos yun eh. E eh, alam niya papalpak, eh bakit pa niya sinubok? Alam naman niya palang magiging resulta. Because if God did not allow man to use his freedom to choose, to break his commands, Man will never know the greatness of God's grace in salvation. Everything that God allows in this world is part of a plan of God to reveal Himself more to mankind. Whenever evil dominates, it is only because God allowed it. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 29, we have read last that Sunday, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, Jesus said? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground without my Father's will. Can you imagine how many birds are falling right now at this very second around the world right now? Can you imagine how many birds are falling right now around the world? This very moment. You cannot count them, maybe tens of thousands. But Jesus said, not one of them will fall without your Father's will. How much more for the daily experiences of your life. You understand this? Even if a man intends to do evil, he can never successfully carry out that evil if God did not allow him. 
Human freedom to choose remains. Man can still choose. Hindi alis ng Diyos yun. Pero the ability to carry out the decision ultimately depends on God. Your experience tells you that also. Do you understand this? So that's why in theology people ask, do we really have freedom of choice? Of course we have. Or else, why would God hold us responsible if we do not have the freedom to choose? Okay? But God, because He is sovereign and remains in control, evil and sin does not limit Him nor threaten Him. He remains above that. But He will allow evil to happen because He has given man the freedom to make the choice. But when God allows freedom to be abused in choosing evil, and He allows that evil to successfully be carried out, then God will bring the consequences that that act is now going to bring into the person's life. So pag gumawa ka ng isang decision na mali, the fact na nagawa mo, pinayagan ka ng Diyos. Ibig sabihin, tuturo ang kanya kasi darating ang consequences. Remember the story of the prodigal son? The father could have restrained the son, right? The father could have rebuked his son. Stop him from what he's doing, right? Because that was dishonorable for his father and for his elder brother. He wanted the inheritance before his elder brother can have his. And the firstborn always gets the first. Yung kuya na dapat ang una, hindi siya. At buhay pa yung father niya, dinidimanan niya. That was so kabastusan. The father could have restrained him, right? But he didn't. God in His grace, as pictured in the Father, Father, Son, allowed man to go on his way. Allowed us to go into sin because he could have stopped that. But God allowed his son, that the son, to go into sin because the father knew the consequences will come. And the consequences will correct and rebuke his son one day. That's why the father has always been waiting for the comeback. That's why in, in that story, the Bible said when the son was still very far away, the father saw him. Now, what are the chances that one particular morning at a particular time in the day, it is the father, not the servants in the estate, who is the first one to see the son coming from a far distance. Among rich people in Israel, in the time of Christ, they have big estates. And it seems that in this parable, it's talking about a very rich father. And in the eighth state, usually there's a tower above the gate where there is an assigned watchman. And those watchmen are there to see if there are people coming in. If they are recognized, then the gate will be open for them. Can you imagine where the father was? The fact that he was able to see his son from a long distance, that particular time of the day, and nobody else saw the son except the father. Can you imagine where the father was? to be able to see from a great distance. Where do you think he was? He was in the tower. And you think it just happened that that day, he just thought of going up there and wow, perfect timing. Do you think it just happened like that? Or his father would go up there every day to scan the horizon, to see his calm son, watching for his son to come back because he knows he will come back. And why does he know? Because the consequences will come. It's going to hurt. The other side is, why does God allow evil to dominate in the world? Because God is going to reveal, number one, that evil will have its consequences. And that in the end, the grace of God will be revealed to those who are willing to humble themselves after what they have done. Because God is a God of grace. You understand this? Okay? So, that's why what, you cannot even commit that failure if God did not allow you to. The fact that Simon Peter denied Jesus three times is only because Jesus allowed it. In fact, we will see in a little while in Luke 22 that Satan asked permission from Jesus to test the disciples and he said, okay. And he knew Simon will fall. He allowed it. Satan cannot tempt Simon if Jesus did not allow it. The devil cannot tempt you if God did not allow it. That's why Jesus commanded us to pray, Father, lead us not into temptation. Because you cannot be tempted until your father will sit. 
And when God allows you to be tempted, it's because He's saying it's time to grow up. By learning to overcome the temptation. Do you understand this? Okay? So, God's, the awesomeness of God's grace is always, you know, becomes the center focus every time we fail. Because God will say, it's all right. I forgive you. But I want you to learn from your mistakes. Amen? Is he a good father? Is he a good father? Okay? John 1.42, the first time that Simon had an encounter with Jesus was during that call, was during his first introduction to him. Okay? In John 1.42, this was before the episode in Luke chapter 5. Jesus' first encounter with Simon took place when, Phil, when Andrew, his brother, introduced Simon to Jesus. Okay? And when Simon came to Christ, when Andrew brought him to Jesus, Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Kephas. Remember what Kephas means? What does it mean? Rock! Rock upon which you build structures, buildings, and houses. That is the basic meaning in the Aramaic language. That's why I'm very happy that John quoted the original word of Christ. That is Ping Amosimo because Jesus spoke Aramaic. The New Testament, the Gospel of John, was written in the Greek language, not in Aramaic. And we're happy that John quoted the original word of Christ, that he called Simon the Rock. And you'll notice if you look at all the epistles of Paul, he always addresses Simon Peter as Kephas. Look at all the writings of Paul. He never addresses Simon Peter as Peter. It's always Kephas. The original Aramaic word, okay? Which when translated in Greek is Peter, which means rock. It comes from the feminine gender, Petra. And because Simon Peter was masculine, hindi pwedeng Petra. <laughs> So, John had to translate it, Petros. And Petros can mean stone. Pero the original word of Christ was not stone, it's rock. Petros can also be translated rock. It's a synonym. Okay? To Petra, na change lang yung ending, naging masculine ending. Do you understand that? So, you will be called the rock. So, let me ask you a question. Why do you think Jesus said, Simon, one day, you'll be called the rock. You remember the message last October 20? Why? That was Jesus' vision for Simon. The beautiful thing about Jesus Christ, when you come to him, he doesn't focus on who you are. He focuses on what you can become by his grace. By his grace. You understand that? That's why he will give you a vision of what you can become. He said, you will be called the rock. You know why rock? Because the personality of Simon was the opposite of rock. He was very impulsive. Mabilis pang dila kaysa tuhod. And then he will change his mind. In other words, if you study the Gospels, Simon Peter demonstrates an unstable personality. Very unstable. You don't know, you cannot predict what will is, he will say for next time. Pumalpak na, pero hindi alam, baka maulit na naman. <laughs> there was a time when he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. When Jesus said, Who do the crowd say I am? Ang tanong niya, Who do the crowd say? Ang sagot niya, Itong say ko. <laughs> and then Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my Father, hindi galing sa iyo yung galing. Galing yan sa Father ko. Okay? And then some, some moments later on, when Jesus said, I will be crucified, I will be handed over to the judge, and I will be, die, and I will rise from the dead. Lord, this will never happen to you. Ano sagot ni Jesus? Get me behind me, Satan! Una, nagsalita siya mula sa Father. Moments later, he was speaking from the devil. Kasi hindi siya, kulang siya ng wisdom. Yun. Okay? He's a very unstable, and yet Jesus said, you'll be called the rock. Jesus will never look at you on the basis of who you are. Because his intent is to change you. To change your life. 
He will always look at you on the basis of what you will become by His grace and is committed to bring you there. And if it takes discipline, He will do it to ensure you get there. Amen? Huwag na natin yung discipline. Masakit yun. <laughs> Sumunod na lang tayo. Amen? So, let's take a look at what this communicates to us. Okay? This is the goal of the Lord. There are three key ideas from Jesus' words. Number one, Jesus defines purpose. When he saw Simon Peter, immediately, ang nakita niya, yung purpose niya para sa buhay niya. You know what he saw in Simon Peter? A potential leader. I want you to know this. Non-leaders focus on problems they see in people. Leaders focus on potentials they see in people. How many of you are in a leadership position? Whether in the church, in your work, workplace, wherever. Okay. If you want to be an effective leader, don't focus on the problems you see in people because that can damage your relationship with them. And that will not make you an effective leader. A leader's role is to bring the best in people, to draw out the best in them. That's the role of a leader. And as a leader, you can only achieve that if you focus on potentials. You deal with the problems on the sidelight, but focus on their potentials. Because as you focus on their potentials, you find yourself encouraging them more, most of the time, rather than criticizing them. Pag tinitignan mo lang yung mga problema o sa ugali ng anak nyo, wala kayong magagawa kundi i-criticize sila. Totoo hindi. And many times, parents are the children's worst critics. As husband and wives are, tend to be, they also their own worst critics of one another. Okay? Unless na nabago na talaga yung ugali. Amen? Okay? Sa so, mga ikakasal pa dyan. <laughs> Tatngalin ang criticism. <laughs> Para hindi masira ang relationship. Kasi lahat naman tao may kahinaan. Magpapakasal kasi sa tao, hindi ang hell. So, live with it. <laughs> And be prepared to live with a fallen angel. <laughs> Maliwana ba sa mga magpag-asawa niya? Kasi nababaka na bubulagang kayo kung anong marriage. Okay? So, Jesus defines purpose. When Jesus, when you came to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you surrendered your life to Christ, the one thing that the Father saw, what is purpose for you? It's not what you are anymore. Because what you are no longer defines your relationship with God. Because what defines your relationship with God is what Jesus did on the cross for you. That's what defines your relationship with God, not your performance. You never come to God on the basis of your good works because He will not accept you if that's the basis. Because you're never good enough for God. Because God's standard is perfect holiness. And we can never be sinlessly holy. We can become more holy and sin less and less and less but only the resurrection of Christ can lead us to sinlessness. Do you understand? Because we will be given a new human nature at the resurrection. Do you understand this? And in the process, the Holy Spirit is transforming and renewing our sinful human nature in this process. Okay? So, Jesus defines purpose for Simon Peter. Question, do you know the purpose of Jesus for you? Let me tell you this. Weak people focus on what they're going through. Strong people focus on where they're going to. Can you say that together? Weak people focus on what they're going through. Strong people focus on where they're going to. Pag tinitin, ay hirap, ay ayoko na dito, ba't po na naga dito, ganyan, ganyan. Talagang manghihina ka. Pero when you focus kung anong purpose nito, at pag ito nangyari, saan ka dadalhin nito? We understand the goal of God in allowing you to go through this, you find encouragement. Okay? Like for example, James 2, can you sidelight and go to a scripture? James 2, uh, James 1, 2 to 4. Ito, parang ano na ito, sirang plaka na ito, no? pero iulitin ko lang sa inyo. Para maintindihan niyo po yung point. You have to look at the goal not your process. Kasi the process is there to achieve a goal. So focus on the goal para hindi ka na down do sa process. Kasi maganda ang pupuntahan niyan. Amen. Di ba? Yung maglaban, isang bundok ng labahan, di ba? Nakaka-discourage. Tama? 
Lalo na pag wala kang washing machine. O kaya, dati ka nagwa-washing machine, biglang nasira, wala kang choice, kundi balik sa mano-mano, ang hirap kasi nasanay ka na sa washing machine. Tama. Pag tititig na mo yung kabundok ng labada mo, marang nakakapanghina. No? Tama. Pero pag naisip mo ng buong pamilya mo, lahat mo kakaroon ng maayos na magdamit, and you can be proud of them, wow, energized, sige lang, basta maganda naman pupuntahan eh. You got a point. Kaya mas naging strong tayo pag nasa, ba't pumunta to? Ay, hindi naman sabi dyan, okay? Consider pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Paano magiging maligaya eh? Nagihirap ka. Okay? Hindi ka mag magliligaya dahil nagihirap ka. You don't rejoice because you are suffering, right? Look at the next verse. You rejoice because you know kung saan pupunta to that this will produce character in my life that will make me mature and make me useful to God even more. Amen. Kasi hindi mo natin tignan yung pinagdadaanan. Matitignan mo kung saan ka dinadala ng Lord through what you're going through. Now you understand. You know because you know, you rejoice. Because you know where this is going to. It's going to make you mature, unshakable, and useful in the hands of God kasi hindi ka atras abante na kristyano. Ayaw ng Diyos yung pabalik-balik. Kasi pag sumunod ka, sumunod ka. Pero of course, He doesn't expect you to be perfect. He still show grace pag pabagsak-bagsak ka. Pero don't stay long sa pagkabagsak mo because God is waiting for you to rise up. Amen. I say to the person beside you, God is waiting for you. You better rise up now and receive His grace. Amen? So, Jesus always defines purpose. When that morning when He came to the Sea of Galilee and He told Simon Peter to put out in the deep for a catch, He was revealing the purpose, His purpose for Simon Peter. You'll see that more after we go through this. Number two, let's go back to the outline. This. Jesus focuses on the process. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin po na Jesus focuses on the process? He said, you shall be called. Future pa. The rock. Hindi ngayon. Hindi pa siya rock ngayon. Very unstable pa siya ngayon. At magiging unstable pa yan as he follows Christ. Okay? So, Jesus saying, this is the goal. You become the rock. But I want you to follow me because I'll involve myself in the process of bringing you there. Amen? So, while God gives you a vision of what He wants you to become, He is also committed to the process of making you that person. And that means Jesus Christ will have to rebuke you from time to time. And there will be time He may have to correct you. Discipline you if necessary. Because that's part of the process. Amen? So, Jesus is committed to the process. He knows that you are still a product in the making. Amen? That you are a masterpiece of grace in the making. Amen? Kaya sabi sa katabi mo, masterpiece of grace ka. Pero hindi ka pa tapos. Kaya nakakainis ka pa rin kumensan. <laughs> okay? So, but Jesus sees Simon Peter as a work in progress. Amen? And is willing to invest three years of his earthly life to help Peter go through the process of becoming the rock the kind of leader that Jesus wanted him to be. You understand this? Okay? So God is engaged in your life right now in processing you. And so please don't hate yourself muna kasi hindi pa tapos ang Diyos sa sarili mo. At huwag ka magja-judge ng kapwa mo kasi hindi pa rin tapos ang Diyos sa kanya. Wala kang karapatang tapusin yung hindi pa natapos ng Diyos. Amen? So pagkasabi sa iyong katabi, don't judge. May bagong ano ngayon ang itbulaga eh, ang tawag dyan? Walang, wag judgmental. Ano ba yun? May bagong sila ngayon, parang game ngayon eh. Nagulat ako, ba? Wag judgmental. Pagkasabi, wag judgmental. Okay? Kahit ano pang atraso ng kapatid mo sa'yo, hindi ibig sabihin, magiging ganyan na sa habang buhay. You don't know what that person is capable of becoming one day by the grace of God. Eh, may lalo na pagkapatid mo sa Panginoon. Hindi pa tapos ang Diyos sa Kanya. Be patient. Amen? And be patient with yourself kasi hindi pa rin tapos ang Diyos sa sarili mo. Amen? Kaya si Jesus, hindi niya pinofocus yung, yung tapos na product. 
process ang tinitignan niya eh. And so long as you are in this world, you are in a process of change. Amen. So be patient with God's work in your life. Okay? So number three, Jesus shows that He values the person. Alam niya, ito yung magdi-deny sa kanya three times. Alam niya yun. Pero even though alam niya, hindi niya tinignan niya, tinignan niya na, na mahalaga, pinadama niya kay Simon Peter na pinapahalagahan niya siya. I value enough to make a rock out of you one day. You know, I'll, I will invest myself to make that happen. Amen? Kung kayo, sino sa inyo parang, basta, gusto ko na bagoyin itong ugali ito, hindi ko mabago-bago, baka galit na galit ang Diyos sa akin, baka sumuko na ang Diyos sa akin. Yan. Sinong minsan ang iya, eh, sumuko na kay ang Diyos sa akin. Pag isabi sa katabi mo, Never. Because He forgives up to 77 times, right? And He's committed to finish the work He started in you. Kung di ka magka-cooperate, mas maraming bukol kasi ang tigas ng ulo. Okay? Pero tatapusin niya yan. Amen. So be encouraged, okay? So, God will value you no matter what happens. You fail here and there, He still loves you. As He did for Simon Peter. In spite of His triple denial, He always extended love and grace to him. Kung si Judas nga, in-honor niya at the last supper, binigyan niya yung, yung bread dip into wine, that's a, a customary way to honor a guest in a banquet. In-honor niya si Judas publicly, pinarangalan niya. Traidor na, magnanakaw. Okay? Because he values people no matter what they do. Amen? Can you say to the person beside you, do you value that person who insulted you? or gusto mo na siyang tirisin sa mundo. Mm -hmm. Yan ang human nature natin eh. Ano ma, wala ka na! <laughs> Pero huwag mong kalimutan. Ikaw dapat rin mawala na sa matahan ng Diyos, agahalit sa mga kasalanan mo. Noon yon before Jesus came. But because of what Jesus has done for you, He will never reject you ever again. Because of His grace. Amen? Okay? So remember always what you have received. You have received grace, show grace. Okay? Para sabihin ng Diyos na hindi ka, hindi ka unfair. Okay? Jesus focused on His purpose for Simon rather than His weaknesses and impending failure. Hindi niya pinokus na ito, makakasama, makakasakit sa kanya. Pinansin yun. Mas inuna niya yung purpose niya. Itong gagawin ko sa buhay mo, Simon. Okay? Secondly, He saw the finished product Yun ang vision niya. You will become the rock. He had a vision for Simon for what he can become by his grace. Peter, the rock. Amen? What is your vision for yourself? Your vision for yourself should align with God's vision for you to become like Christ. And say to that, by the grace of God, I will grow into Christ-like character. Never doubt that for a moment. Amen? Pag may tao kang kinainisan, by the grace of God, I believe this person can be better by His grace. So I will pray for the person instead of criticizing him. Do you understand this? Your prayer will do more miracles than fighting, insulting, and criticizing that person. Because criticizing the person can bring out the worst in him. Dada na pang niya matanggap yung criticism mo. Pero affirming, inspiring, and praying can bring out the best in the person. Amen? Kasama na dyan yung asawa mo. Kasama na dyan yung magulang mo, kapatid mo, at anak mo. Or kolig mo sa trabaho. Prayer can do more wonders than a thousand words trying to change the person. Because only God can change what you may not. Focus on inspiring, encouraging, affirming. Make him believe he can be a better person. Okay? So what Jesus saw in Simon... Okay? He saw number one, his leadership potential. Kaya kinaw, gagawin kitang rock eh. A rock is a, something upon in which you build something. It's an expression of a leader who one day will be the one who will lead others to Christ. He saw his leadership potential. He saw his capacity for devotion to what he believes. 
Even if they turn away from you, I will never turn away from you. I'll die for you. Wow, and dying devotion na namatay that night. Kasi nag-deny siya three times. Okay? Pero may capacity ba siya for devotion? Does he have a capacity for being devoted? Yes! Mahina lang tuhod. Malakas ang puso. <laughs> Pero mahina ang tuhod. <laughs> Do you understand that? Okay? Nakita ni Jesus yun. Kaya sabi niya, You know, Simon, you have the makings of a great leader one day. I see your potential. I see your, your heart. And number three, he saw his willingness to stand for a friend against all the odds. Kaso lang, pumalpak. <laughs> Pero nandun yung intention niya. Amen? Okay? So, imbis na hanapin natin what's wrong with your husband, what's wrong with your wife, what's wrong with your children, what's wrong with your parents, hanapin muna natin kung anong magandang nasa kanila. Pansinin yung maganda. Amen? Ipagpray na lang yung pangit. Amen? Hanapin yung maganda. Kasi yung maganda, lalong nakaka-encourage. Tama? At alam na natin kasabihan dito sa BCI, pag laki kang nakatingin sa pangit, na nangyayari sa atin? Nagiging pangit tayo. Kasi pati ugalat natin, pumapangit. Attitude natin, pumapangit. Salita natin, pumapangit. Pati mata natin, yung tingin, pumapangit din. Kasi laki kang nakatingin sa pangit eh. Pero titingnan mo yung maganda sa tao, hinahanap mo yung maganda, anong labas natin, gumaganda rin tayo. Kasi nagiging affirming tayo, encouraging, inspiring. ba? Diba? So, alam niyo po, that's the best beauty tips for women. Okay? 5,000 investments sa beauty parlor will go to the trash ka the moment na sumimangot ka na. Patay yung investment. <laughs> Pero kung lagi kang positive na tao, nakikita mo lagi yung maganda, nakikita mo lagi yung potential, abay lagi kang masaya. Amen. Sa pagkasabi sa katabi, beauty is an attitude. Okay? So where Simon needs work on, number one, he needs work on his impulsiveness. Kaya kailangan siya maging bato eh, kasi <laughs> impulsive. Okay? Number two, kailangan ng work sa kanyang takot sa tao. Yun yung lumabas nung gabi na yun. Oh, hindi ko siya kilala. Oh, I don't know the man. Oh, yun, takot sa tao eh. So, yeah, Jesus had to work on that. Number three, his pride of himself. Kasi lagi na lang number one. Pag may tanong, lagi number one. Parang, nabi lang. Pag may volunteer, number one siya. Talagang gusto maging leader. Walang masama sa pag gusto maging leader. Amen? Pero you must be ready to qualify yourself for it. Amen. Okay? So, masyado siyang laging first. Parang, you know. Kaya nyo nag-uusap. Si James and John, sabi ni Lord, sabi ng nanay ni James and John, pwede bang dalawang anak ko si James and John, sa left and right mo? Wow. Sabi sa Bible, and all the disciples were indignant. Nagalit na galit. Can you guess sino isa doon? <laughs> nagalit na galit. Namingin ng special preference kay James at si John. Jesus focused on Simon's potential rather than on his weaknesses. Parents, parenting tip. If you want to draw out the best in your children and give them the confidence to change what they need to change in their ugali, remember this, focus on their potentials, not on their weaknesses. Okay? Build, if you want to change a person, you have to give him the confidence to change. Tama? You don't destroy the confidence by degrading him with degrading words. Hindi po nakaka-build ng confidence yung masasakit ng mga salita. Amen? Make him believe in what he can become. Let him face consequences for wrong behavior. Dis may discipline pa rin. Anak, love you, pero grounded ka for one month from the TV. <laughs> wow, baby! Kung tama na drama mo, hindi yan uubra. Okay? Grounded ka for one month from TV because pangatlong beses ka na nagsinungaling. Tommy! Walang negosyasyon. I love you. But you're grounded. Ganun na. Hindi mo na kailangan sigawan. Ano? Kailangan tayo sumisigaw kasi we don't know how to handle it anymore. Eh. We're, you're getting out of control. If you cannot control your temper and your anger, how can you control the behavior of your child? Amen? I need to parenting seminar, okay? 
So, non-leaders focus on problems they see in people. Leaders focus on potentials. Look at your students' potentials and keep inspiring them. And tell them, you know, if you want to be successful like this, kasi binigyan mo siya ng vision eh, at naniniwala siya, kaya niya yun. You know, you need to deal with this ugali. Kasi itong ugali mo, hindi ka ma ma this can stop you from becoming this person. You understand this? Okay? So, can we read this? Most people focus on what people are and on what they wear. Jesus focuses on what they can become by His grace. That's leadership. Okay? He saw Simon's impending failure as a necessary part of His purpose for Him and to achieve His full potential. Do you know why Jesus allowed Simon to fail? Because it was part of the molding of Simon Peter. God will allow you to fail because it's part of His plan to change you. Can you say together, God allows us to fail because it is part of His plan to change us. You will never see what you need to change until you fail. And that moment of revelation is important to God to humble you and to teach you to depend on God, to empower you to change that. Okay? You first have to acknowledge na kahinaan mo yan. Acknowledge na vulnerable ka dyan. Kaya pinayagan mag-fail kasi gusto niya ipakita sa iyo kung saan ka vulnerable. Na doon ka niya babaguhin. Okay? So anong purpose? Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you all as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. I'm trying to remember if I shared this last October 20. Okay, but for the sake for those who have not been there, this is very important. Jesus said that night, Simon, you'll be tested tonight, as well as all the disciples. You're about to be tested. And especially for you, I prayed for you. The word there, you, is singular. Special talaga si Simon Peter, okay? He asked to sift all of you as sweet, but I have prayed for you. How about the other disciples? You, Simon Peter. Because si Simon Peter ang tinututukan niya for leadership. You understand this? Kaya most of his prayers will go out to the one whom he is molding and changing. I prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. Amen. So, ano ibig sabihin po nun? Is Jesus praying that Simon will not deny him three times? That you will have enough faith, you know, to say, Yes, I'm one of his followers. Yan ba yung ibig sabihin ng prayer of faith? No, you already heard that message, right? Hindi pwede yung, I pray that your faith will not fail. It does not refer to the threefold denial because Jesus said, siguradong gagawin mo yun. Yeah, sabi niya, before the cock cross, you will deny me three times. Sigurado yun! Eh, bakit siya nag-pray? I pray that your faith will not fail. Para saan yun? Is it to prevent him from denying him? Or is it faith for him to go back to Jesus after he failed? Okay? See, it is faith after the failure, not faith that will keep him from failing. Jesus will allow him to fail. But the hardest thing is at the moment of failure, when you're down there, the hardest thing is to believe that God will still be there for you. Kaya marami nagpapakamatay. Judas nagpakamatay. Kasi wala na siyang paniniwala na pwede pa siyang mapatawat, pwede pa siyang magbago, na pwede pa siyang magkaroon ng another opportunity to change or have another chance to life. The faith is gone. Understand? Jesus was praying that after he fails, he will have the faith to come back to Jesus. Unlike Judas, who lost all faith and hanged himself. Are you still here? So, when you fail, don't think that God is angry at you. Jesus is praying for you that you will come back. 
God is not angry with you, but God is hurt and offended. Pero hindi po siya temperamental tulad natin. Napakahaba ng pasyensya niya. Because of His grace in Christ. Amen? So hindi po mainitin ng ulo ang Diyos. Amen? Salamat tayo pag nakakasala, walang kidlat, bumabagsak sa langit. Every time you sin. Kasi ang Diyos napaka-patient. Amen? Napaka-gracious. Pero hindi ibig sabihin, sumasang ayon siya sa ginawa mo. He still dishonors God. He still offends Him. But because of His grace, He does not condemn you. Because Jesus paid for that sin already. Are you still there? He cannot condemn you. Okay? So, what's the purpose why Jesus prayed that His faith would not fail? Take a look at the verse again. And when you have turned back, I'm going to say, turn back. So, sigurado ba siya magta-turn back si Jesus? After he denies his master? Is Jesus sure that Simon Peter will turn back to him? Eh, sabi niya, and when you have turned back, that means, he knows it's going to happen. And why is he sure that he turn back to Jesus? Uh, bakit? Kasi he's going to pray for him. That his faith will not fail. And he knows his prayer will always be answered by his father. Amen? It is when you are about to fail, you know, Jesus is interceding for you. And even in the midst of your sin and failure, He continues to intercede for you. That you have faith enough to come back. Because God is there and He will show you grace. Amen? So, and when you have turned back, anong gagawin niya ngayon? Strengthen your... Who are those? Who are those brothers? The other apostles. Kabarkada niya, the dream team of Jesus, the apostles. He's saying, Simon, I'm allowing you to go through this failure because I want you to rise up to be the leader who will encourage the others. I'm preparing you for leadership. Amen? Encourage na kayo? The important thing, bumalik ka lang kay Lord. Kasi hindi pa siya tapos sa'yo. Kung tapusin. Amen? So, he said, I want you to strengthen your brothers. And you know what? Jesus, Simon Peter, according to the book of Acts, and according to the pieces of Paul, rose up to be the leader of the eleven. He became the chief of the apostles. The first one to preach the gospel at Pentecost to the Jews, and later on, the first one to preach the gospel to the Gentiles in Acts chapter 10. He was always taking leadership. But this time, Jesus Christ have qualified him for leadership. Amen? So, Simon was being prepared to strengthen his brothers because he was being prepared to be the leader of the eleven. Take a look at this. Jesus focused on the process by which he will accomplish his purpose. He will be called in the future. The process will take time. He spent three years shaping Simon's character to prepare him to become a strong leader. And here comes some important points. Failure and pain, like what Simon went through, was part of the process. He allowed Simon to fail and to reap the consequences, but released him from condemnation because he forgave him. Amen? Pain as a consequence of failure is intended to humble us, to teach us wisdom, and to lead us to change. If we are willing to learn from it, if we seek to blame someone else for the failure, it can harden us. If we take responsibility for our failure, it humbles us and leads us to become a better person. So it takes a lot of humility to allow a failure to make you a better person because you have to take responsibility for your failure. Stop blaming God. Stop blaming others. Stop blaming another person. Take full responsibility because until you take full responsibility, you will never change because you think, wala sa yung problem. Eh, sa yung palang problema. Amen. Okay? Can you say to the person beside you, take responsibility for your own choices. Don't blame others. Eh, siya kasi nagsimula eh. Kung di siya nagsimula, hindi ko nagawa yung ginawa ko. Oo nga, siya nagsimula, ikaw nagtapos. Tinapos mo. Amen. You cannot blame another person for your actions. What people do to you define who they are, not you. 
But what you do in reaction to them, that's what defines who you are. Amen? Can you repeat? What people do to me or say against me does not define who I am. It defines who they are. Ang ganyan pala siya mag-isip. Oh, problema niya yon. Mag-i-struggle talaga siya sa akin. <laughs> kasi ganun siya mag-isip eh. Problema niya, hindi ko yung problema kasi alam ko, kung, alam ko, alam ko sarili ko at alam ko hindi totoo yun. Ba't kapapa-apekto? Kasi alam mo namang hindi totoo. Amen? Amen? Ba't ka kapapa-apekto sa isang taon na alam mo hindi totoo? Ba't ka kapapa-apekto? Papakahirap ka doon sa hindi totoo? Nagpakaalipin ka sa taong yun by your own choice. Tataka ba't galit na galit ka, punong-punong ka ng bitterness. Decision mo kasi yan eh. Amen? Ayan mo siya. Ayan, opinion niya. Opinion niya yun. Mali siya doon kasi alam mo kung totoo. Kung ganun siya mag-isip, huwag ka na magpa-apekto sa kanyang pag-iisip kasi hindi ka naman ganun mag-isip. Amen? Ayan mo siya. Problema niya yung pananagutan niya sa Diyos, yung opinion niya laban sa iyo. Pananagutan sa Diyos, yung ginagawa niya sa iyo. Aharap siya sa Diyos niyan. Bantay lang yan. Pero, ikaw, huwag kang pa-apekto. Instead, maging kind ka sa kanya para wala siyang masabi sa iyo. Kasi how you respond to evil defines you. And show to him a better example than what he is showing to you. Don't get even. Get? Get? Nakalimutan ninyo. Don't get even. Get? Yay. Over. Again, one more time. Don't get even. Get over! Walang pansinin. Napakaikli ng buhay para magpakaalipin ka sa ganyan. Amen. Amen. Be happy. Don't allow people to change who you are. If you know you're on the right place. Pero alam mo kung wali ka, ay makinig ka. Kung tama siya, makinig ka. Ikaw magbago. Amen. Okay? So, if you take responsibility, then failure will humble us. Let me finish this. Okay? Jesus focused on the person rather than on his performance. Alam naman niya, papalpak to. He said, he focused on Simon's potential to become. He does not condemn us for our failures, but gives us the opportunity to recover from it by his grace. All the scriptures are there to show you this is God's attitude. Okay? He doesn't like to condemn. Tayo lang yun, manig mag-condemn. Pati sarili natin, gano'ng condemn natin. Pero ang Diyos ni Kanakin na-condemn. Kasi alam niya, hindi pa siya tapos sa iyo eh. Amen? You're still a masterpiece of grace in the making. So, He just wait for you to learn from your mistake, rise up again, and become a better person. Yun ang iniintay niya. Okay? Hindi yung mag- mamuhay tayo sa self-pity, self-condemnation, galit ka sa sarili mo. Wala magagawa yun. So, just bring out the worst in you. Okay? So John 3.17, remember, the Son of God did not come into this world to condemn the world. Hindi po, hindi po condemning si Jesus. But that the world might be saved through Him. Ang goal niya is to redeem you. To change you. Not to condemn you. Amen? Jesus values you more than your failed performance. Despite all our moral offenses and failures, He so was worth dying for. Amen? You know this verse, one of my favorite verses, that while we were yet sinners, Christ honored us with His life. That does not change. Amen? And so the third time in John 21, His third failure in the Sea of Galilee, He said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. You are now the shepherd of the others. I want you to take care of them. I'm about to leave you going to go back to my father. Mission accomplished. But Simon, I want you to take care of them. Feed my sheep. Take care of my flock. And you know why? Because you have finally confirmed to me that you really love me. And if you love me, you will love those that I care about. Amen? Can you say this? If I love Jesus, I will love those that he loves. And who are those that he loves? The other sheep. Okay? Take a look at Luke 10. This is the higher purpose. He told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Are you praying that God will send more laborers? 
Are you? This is Jesus' command. Pray that the Lord will send out laborers into the harvest field. Amen? Pero hindi siya nag-stop sa pray. Go! Nakasama ka pala doon sa answered prayer. <laughs> you pray and be an answer to the prayer. Go! I am sending you like lambs among wolves. That's why in the story of Luke 5, after they saw the miracle of the catch, miraculous catch, Jesus said, From now on, you will be fishing for men. And they left everything and followed him. When Jesus was open to demonstrate to Simon Peter, Simon Peter, you caught, ni you caught nothing last night, right? And I gave you a miracle. I want to show you I am more than enough for your needs. Your nets were breaking. Your boats were sinking. Those nets were designed professionally to take any load of fish. Those boats were designed professionally to carry any load of catch. But listen to this. Even the engineering experience of that time, God was breaking apart because the nets were breaking and the boats were sinking because of the awesome revelation of God's power. Let me tell you this. You have nothing to worry about your needs when you follow God with all your heart. God is more than you ever need. And he's saying, Simon, you've been in this fishing business all your life. I'm about to promote you. I've shown you I can give you all the fish that you want. Now I want you to follow me. Amen? Anong goal ni Jesus? I will make you fishers of men. Because Simon, there is a greater priority in my kingdom above your business. And because I love people and I sacrifice my life for all, I want you to bring in the harvest for me. Amen? Are you willing to say, I love you, Jesus? And because I love you, I will continue to reach out to others so I can bring them to you. Because that's what loving you means. Loving those that you love. Amen? Let me close with these words. Your classmates in school, your colleagues in your workplace, your neighbors, your relatives, members of your family, when God places these people within the scope of your influence, it creates a responsibility. Because you have something that they need. Giving them money can help them in a problem, but it will not change their lives. But sharing Jesus to them can change their lives. Because only Jesus can change their lives. The greatest gift you can give to people thinking of Christmas is not a gift that after, you know, six months, three months, or one year, wala na. Why don't you share with them the greatest gift of all? A gift that will really change their lives. Bring hope to their hopeless situations. Bring healing and transformation to their marriages and families bring hope for generations to come. Why don't you share Jesus Christ more than anything else? And pray that the Lord will touch their hearts, that they will know the one who alone can change their lives and save them. That's why the title of this message is Give Up Your Small Ambitions. Because God has bigger ambitions for you. Wherever you are, wherever God has positioned you, you are there not just to fulfill your personal goals in life. You're not there to earn a living or to get a master's degree or a bachelor's degree. You are there because God put you there to be a light. To bring hope to the people that are under your influence. Because that position carries responsibility. If you do not tell them, who will? If you do not lead them to Christ, who will? That's why give up your smaller ambitions for the greater purposes of God. He wants you to be an instrument of His work of changing lives by bringing them to Jesus. Amen? And show them Christ's love for them. Affirm people. Because so many are so damaged and broken. They need to be affirmed. 
Jesus won so many sinners to him because he was affirming of sinners while the Pharisees were condemning them. The Christian church is a church that brings healing and the affirming love of Christ. Even to the SDIs, people called LGBT, sexually disoriented individuals, they need to know the love of Christ. They need to feel the love of Jesus. And then, when they know they are confident, they can be led to the truth that will set them free. Amen? Why don't you start making plans today? And start praying. Who are the people you would like to reach out for Jesus? And tell them about Jesus. Let's bow in prayer. Father in heaven, we recognize that life is short, will soon be past. Only what's done for Christ will last. Lord, I pray that you will engage in pursuits that matter for eternity and not just for this life in this world, which is so short. I pray that we invest our time and our efforts to things that count for all eternity. So that, Lord, we are investing in the life to come, knowing that our life will soon be passed in this world. I pray that you teach us to number our days, that we will learn a heart of wisdom in how we live each day. And Lord, in all the things that you have entrusted to us, wherever you have positioned us, Lord, we will allow you to love people around us. We will allow you, Lord, to draw more people to yourself as we share you to them and the good news that you are their Savior. I pray that this Christmas will be a time of giving the greatest gift of all, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for reminding us that failure is not the end, but failure is the beginning of our experience of your grace that is intended to change our lives. I thank you so much, Father, for speaking to us. And Lord, may you lead us, Lord, to those people whom you want to bring to your kingdom. Lead us to those people that you want us to share your gospel so that they may know you because you love them as you have loved us. And you want them back. You want them to come to you. Lord, use us. In Jesus' name, amen.